We want to turn to trade. It's impacting markets this morning. The U.S. and China reportedly struggling to arrange a trade meeting for September. This is a fresh round of tariffs on China kicked in over the weekend, targeting goods like clothing, tools, electronics, all of that went into effect September 1. China then, of course, responded by imposing retaliatory tariffs on U.S. imports of soybeans, crude oil, and pharmaceuticals. And it also filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization. Joining us right now is Michigan Congresswoman and House Energy and Commerce Committee member Debbie Dingell. And Congresswoman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Maria. Always you, good to be with you, you. Your reaction to this latest retaliation from China, uh, obviously it's still impacting markets. I know that you've said in the past when you've been with me that you support what the president is doing, but where's the end game here? Well, I don't know where the end game is, and that is part of the problem. The, as you know, the president tweeted after I talked about it on Saturday, but I made it very clear on Saturday that we've got to do something about China. China does manipulate our currency. It does subsidize the goods that they bring into our country, and they're stealing our intellectual property. But a chaotic strategy leaves everybody guessing. So uh, I wish that we he would communicate even with the Hill a little more on what he's doing. But I, I will tell you, he's been willing to deal with unfair trade practices in a way that I haven't seen anybody willing to do in a couple of decades. Yeah. But we've got to do it in a way we understand it, it, do, it doesn't impact the markets. We've got to explain it to consumers that they may have short-term gain on lower consumer costs, but when they then get a monopoly on the market, they're going to raise the cost. Yeah. Well, well, Got to do a better job uh, Mitch, explaining it. Uh, Mitch Rochelle's here, and, and, and this president has completely changed the conversation on China. People now have a clear understanding of the Chinese behavior. Yeah, and this, it, it used to just be lip service that was highly politicized. Now it's actually action, and we're sitting down and having a conversation, and we're calling them out for some of their behavior. But it is it is a long process. And uh, it's uncertainty. Absolutely. Congresswoman, uh, question for you. By the way, you're in Ann Arbor, so i got to say go blue to you. But that's besides Go me. blue. Go blue. Thanks for noticing. Want to know. I like the way the season started. Anyway, um, we had Senator Blackburn on, and one of the things we talked about was USMCA and the fact that it's sort of stalled in your chamber. Because if there was any kind of a deal with China, the question would be could it get passed legislatively? What is the status of USMCA? Uh, we are returning next week, and I think we'll have some tough conversations. I'm not, I know that there's been a team of eight negotiating. I am somebody that believes we have to pass, I always call it NAFTA 2.0. But we've got to do it so that my workers in Michigan aren't competing with the $1.50 wage in Mexico. So I know that they've been working it. We need to get an update. Uh, President Trump, AFL CIO, is on his way to Mexico to talk to. Uh, the workers there. Uh, I believe we have to get a bill, but we got to get one that is fair to working men and women for, for me to vote for it in my state of Michigan. Co Congresswoman, you, you talk about <clears throat> workers uh, in your area in Michigan. How? What are you hearing from constituents about how the manufacturing sector is holding up right now with all the uncertainty over China tariffs and UMC, USMCA and the other trade problems? They're, you know, they're trying to understand it, and that's part of the problem. You know, I don't think the president does a good job of talking about China at times to these workers. I try to tell them, and by the way, you know, when he goes against General Motors or tweets against General Motors, General Motors isn't importing cars from China to here. It's these lower-cost goods that are being imported to here. But, you know, last week uh, we laid off 200 more jobs at a steel plant. We're still reeling from the closure of four General Motors plants. Workers want to know what's being done to stabilize jobs here, to bring jobs back from Mexico to here. And we're talking about that and talking about how we need trade policies. This is an area that NAFTA 1.0 cost jobs and shuttered plants, and we still have those shuttered plants standing there empty. Meanwhile, the House is continuing to ramp up the pressure for impeachment, Congresswoman. Some Democrats in crucial swing districts, like Pennsylvania's Connor Lamb and New Jersey's Josh Gottheimer, represent, uh, reportedly being pressed to act to bring impeachment to the table. So far, neither have. The opposition giving House Speaker Nancy Pelosi leverage as she argues against impeachment. Where do you stand on all of this? 
Well, I'll continue to stand where I have stood. I think nobody's above the law. You've got to follow the facts. Uh, I was in Ann Arbor. Uh, I, too, have been uh, the target of some of those ads. But I'm very clear, we are not going to win an election just being anti anybody. We've got to be and talk about the issues. We've got to talk about health care. We've got to talk about trade. We've got to talk about the environment. And we that's going to win this election. So the Judiciary Committee needs to do their job, follow the facts. No one's above the law. People like me on other committees need to be worried about health care, prescription drug prices, and what we're going to do about things like PFAS that's poisoning our water. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about it, but you're also going to have to vote. I mean, at some point, if Nancy Pelosi does not bring USMCA to the floor, who gets it's blamed. So I'm going to get back there and I'm going to, I, people know how I feel. We need a new NAFTA 2.0, but we got to get it to the point. I've talked to Ambassador Lighthouser regularly. I am not part of that negotiating committee of eight. I know they've been to Mexico. They've been doing things. I think the trip of President Trump to Mexico will be very important. Yeah. Does that bring labor on board? Let's see. Congressman, good to see you. Uh, Good yeah, real you. quick. Go ahead, John. Well, you know, Very a lot quick. of people, are, Republicans are going to say that Democrats don't want to give the president a victory on NAFTA 2.0. What do you say to that? That's right. Uh, I, by the way, have been saying to people that we've got to be careful that people don't say that. I think that that's why I think that this President Trump trip is very important to Mexico. If labor gets to the point that they can support some kind of compromise bill, then they will bring a number of people along. Yeah, you, with you, them. you keep saying President Trump. -ka. It's it's weird because <laughs> President, know, but President Trump is the president of, president of, of the United, United States. States. I know. Richard it's Trump, Trump, Trump is the leader of Richard the union. Richard Trump is yeah. the AFL CIO, you got it. but that All is right. his title. But yeah. you are Con right. I don't want to confuse anybody. Exactly. Congressman, <laughs> it's good you. to see you. Thanks so much. Good Congressman to see you. Debbie Thank Dingell you. joining us there.